According to yogic philosophy, we have different layers. Body. Physiological processes. Subconscious impulses. Attention and memory. All this is perceived by us as part of us. Although we have little control over these processes. Health and rejuvenation. Vitality and energy. All this can be achieved much more intensely, with a special mental attitude. Special mental attitude. View of the universe. An important component. Strengthening the physical side, it complements the yoga exercises. The student who studies this philosophy, this outlook achieves better results in exercise and meditation. We do not fully own what is rightfully ours, we use only part of our full potential. This is the definition of the problem. We must understand the problem. Understanding the problem is in itself the solution to the problem. Understanding is action by non action. Contrary to popular belief, the higher stages of meditation are not that difficult. Spiritual self improvement does not depend on the amount of knowledge. It is important to learn the simplest method of meditation and practice. Spend time on this, every day. This stimulates that part of the psyche that was previously inhibited. The psyche begins to change. Enlightenment occurs and the universe is experienced differently. This is the goal. This is how progress happens. The disciple immediately receives this new experience, as if his spiritual eyes were open. I was blind, but now I have received my sight. It is difficult to describe enlightenment, as difficult as telling someone about a new scent. Therefore, spiritual practice is not the study of enlightenment itself, but of those means that contribute to it. There is an ancient legend about knowledge. Angels try to convey the truth, but demons distort it. Words, images, meaning, everything was perverted by the demons, until the angels expressed the truth in a completely simple ritual. And the demons were powerless. Yoga, Zen and other meditation systems are based on simple exercise. This is introspection, a turn of consciousness inward. Because of this turn of the vector, the psyche becomes able to better and better explore itself. Know yourself, and you will know the whole universe. Daily meditation practice leads to self-knowledge. And enlightenment is a kind of stage. Sometimes they rarely follow one after another. Sometimes progress is faster, and every day one veil after another falls into the student's eye. By concentrating all his attention on the process of concentration, the student strengthens his psyche. Other functions such as imagination, memory, intuition develop from training. Attention itself, and the ability to completely switch it to what is being considered leads to analytical thinking and developed logic. But there is one feature on which I want to draw your attention. The meditative state is identical to the hypnotic state. A hypnotist can rewrite the psyche of a person immersed in hypnosis, remove memories, change habits. The practice of meditation gives each of us the same opportunity. Mentally, our nature splits into our, I, the hypnotist and the rest of the psyche, the hypnotized. During meditation, we become able to change psychic records. And it gives power over our destiny. We consciously rewrite ourselves, constantly improving. We are able, at a subtle, mental level, to change some attitudes to others, to cultivate useful habits instead of harmful ones. What is the mechanism of this transformation? Energy, moving in the psyche, paves the way, like a stream of water in the rain. If the water flows again along the same path, a stream appears, and a riverbed. The same happens in the psyche. Circulating, energy makes paths like water on sand, and these paths are called ingrams. Any emotion, action, even though itself paves the way, is imprinted as an engram record. Words, thoughts and emotions. Ingram records. Subtle imprints of past actions, in other words, it is easier for the energies to flow along the already paved path, and each such record is like the seed of its own repetition. Engrams are unconscious impressions, the subtlest traces of everything that we thought, did, experienced, and even deserved to do. They represent a habit or influence of the past on the present, manifested as a reflex, automatism, a stereotyped, habitual reaction to a challenge. A cigarette smoked in the past, having become an imprint, an engram, 
wants to germinate, again, to be actualized, and turns into a new action, into a new lit cigarette. Any thought, any action leaves a similar trail that forms a personality. We are the sum of our thoughts, you can change yourself, your destiny, changing the way of thinking, is repeated in books over and over again. Different people have a different accumulated amount of previous thoughts, passions, dreams, fears, disappointments, words and actions. And people are born with different dispositions. Some, villains, from childhood, others, mathematics from the very beginning. Someone wrote an opera in five years. Another, solves the problem of higher mathematics. I believe that the word, karma, refers to this collection of mental imprints. Our thoughts, decisions, actions, they remain in us, in the unconscious. They shape us today, shape the future. The action turns into an engram recorded in the psyche. Such a samskara must realize itself, repeat itself, again become an action. So karma works, we are trying to change ourselves, but the samskaras are opposed with incredible force. Karma is our handcuffs. Man is born with certain tendencies inherent in it. This series of actions and habits is called the wheel of fate. Meditation, like a lantern, illuminates the darkness of the subconscious. Possibly descend into the dark basement, and explore the shelves, countless recordings. These are the paths along which the energy circulated in the psyche. The furrows that were left by past actions and thoughts. It is important to understand what an engram is. The mind, like a potter's vessel to the ground. It's full of engrams. Each engram is a subconscious program waiting to be actualized. Like seeds that can sprout. Concentration acts as if the fire would affect the earth with the seeds. Seeds, roasted with fire, unable to rise. Some mysterious way, meditation voltage also acts on subliminal prints. The psyche is cleansed of traces of the past, it becomes tabula rasa. There is also a beautiful comparison with fire, it is said that the sage melts himself, transforming himself into a better and better version. Meditation makes the psyche plastic. And it makes it possible to make changes at the level of these engrams. Rewrite the program.